We will begin this morning with our panel from Liberty's Vigil, the Occupy Anthology. That's 99 poets among 99%. And this is a collection of poetry that was released in 2012 by editors Carla Lynn Merrifield and Dwayne Wilder. It was published by Foothills Publishing Company and 20% of the proceeds was, uh, has been donated to Occupy. There are 99 poets from 22 states and six countries speaking out on a wide range of viewpoints and styles, but a unified theme. Today we have three of the 99 to form a bit of panel reading here. And I will be happy and honored to introduce them to you and then let them get started. They'll be taking a seat over here and uh, speaking at this podium. And the three panelists that we have are poet, Susan Edwards Richmond of Acton. Susan is the author of four collections of poetry, founding member of Concord Poetry Center and Fruitland Poet in Residence. And she's now on the board for the Creeley Foundation and a guest editor for the Mass Audubon. We have Richard Smith of Haverhill, who works as a library media specialist, and he's an adjunct professor of new media at Emerson College and editor of the poetry journal Albatross. And we have Alice Weiss, who is an emerging poet after working 21 years as a civil rights attorney in Louisiana. And she started writing and sharing her poetry, and since then she has been published in a number of journals and also participated in a number of poetry readings. And so that uh, consists of our panel for today, and we're happy to hear from them. And if we could please all welcome the three of them together, they'll take on from here. What if the 50 innocent are five short? Will you destroy the whole city because of five? And God answered, if I find 45 there, I will not destroy it. After the first Sodom, all over the world, men are meeting in small rooms. Small men are meeting under hot lights, writing the name of God in large letters on memos and blackboards, waving small wands above shining screens. All over the world, men are weighing small numbers next to large, arms churning, battling through fog, both the real fog of God's weather and the manufactured fog that extends the reach of God's fist, imagining God has a fist, as he certainly did once when he spoke out of the book in the days he still commanded men, and men, large and small, argued back and were exalted. The next poem I want to read from the anthology is by a New York-based poet named Laura Glenn. And this is from her experience. It's called Visiting Zuccotti Park. On our way to occupy Wall Street, October rain turns to snow. The wind blows my umbrella backward. We huddle under yours, like people out of Hiroshige, and press through this floating world. We step over a puddle scattered with faded confetti, my hands red with cold, jeans soaked to the knees. But we have a warm home to go to. At the park, occupiers are zipped inside blue hemispheres like turtles. I too am shelled in brine of discontent. How then to connect these domed tents? We're told that all night an Alaskan wakes exhausted campers, makes them move their legs against frostbite, that people must spell one another. Then the speaker leaves, worn out. We stand alone in this dreamscape amid broken worlds. This storm has been brewing a long time. <clears throat> Uh, I'd like to read a poem from a woman in Quebec. 
Her name is Tanya Belhumer Alot, and her poem is Occupation, Girl on the Corner of St. Catherine and Peel. Even her gaze is vacant, her mind elsewhere, preoccupied with daily bread, something warm for her hands to hold. So much depends on weather and the thin quality of mercy in a life chiseled down to this moment, this breath, homeless. She occupies no space at all, does not own even her own body. No corner lot, no tree is hers, only the shadow cast by the sun in the late afternoon offers her shelter. And the final poem I'd like to read from the anthology is by Devru Baker, and the poem is called My Name Means Memory. My name is Hafiza. I came from the East during the war. If you close your hands over the tops of mine, you can hear knights unwrap themselves, bending over from the waist down with their burden of broken wood or reaching deep into frozen earth, fingers going numb with their own memories. Wrap this memory like a shawl of dreams around your shoulders. My husband carried our youngest son 10 days and nights from our home to the camps, moving like a chant through fields of frozen birds, crying when he broke their wings beneath his feet. Pain was the swelling around the dark fruit we were forced to eat for bread. It was the wafer that melted against our tongues, causing us to carry the dark seeds into our throats, rattling beneath our ribs until they blossomed deep inside our bodies and caused us to dream a pathway for reunions with death time and again. These are the flowers of witness that bloom when I try to forget. Carry this picture then in your locket and wear it on a silver chain next to your heart forever as I wear it, softly swinging on a thread of memory, swinging between my breasts like a prayer, repeating the same words over and over. My name is Hafiza. I came from the East during the war. I just want to close with one quick poem um, that kind of speaks to some of these themes from my book, Purgatory Chasm. It's called Sins, and it's kind of a riff on the, se the seven deadly sins. Sins. At the rim of the chasm loop, I stop and write a new list of sins. Contentment, obedience, timidity, haste, temperance, ingratitude, certainty. I take stock of my guilt, make resolutions, walk on. So thank you. The next poet who will, who will be reading is Richard Smith. Reawakening. Do you hear it? The shout awakening once again, stretching its tired limbs, this scream deep within, slumbering so long, now gone forth to do battle. For there be giants about, corporate persons, and there are slings to arm with five smooth stones. Wake now, O oh ye righteous anger, stoke your dragon ire, let your very breath be as a cleansing fire. Do you hear it? The voice of justice loud and clear, yearning to be heard, a song of earth and its people, those ignored by the profiteer. Rise, ye ancient prophets, let your voice be heard. Sing the song of Jubilee, and may your words be as lightning 
in this darkest night. I'll grab the anthology and read one from here, since uh, I seem to be doing okay with the time. And it turns out that there is another Richard Smith in the anthology, a John Richard Smith, but his name's spelled with an I, mine is spelled with a Y. So I'm going to read John Richard Smith's poem. His is called Occupation of the Heart. It is not a protest or a demonstration, but an occupation. And whoever occupies the heart sleeps on stone in the absent shadows of two thrones. How effortlessly the moon slips in and out of phases. Not so the heart. Not so its occupation, which demands the strength it takes to birth a nation. In the cold fall rain, the heart pitches its makeshift tent at the foot of a Goliath wall. Its only arms, a single drum, but it is only one among many. Listen, you can hear the summons beating its wings against your rib cage. Goliath, there's Goliath again. Hmm. I'm going to read a few poems that I wrote that have a kind of political spin. And these all came out of a series of poems about boots. I attended a workshop, and someone brought a pair of muddy boots in and asked us to do brainstorming, which I had never done before. I had taught it, but never had done it. And out of this brainstorming session, a whole number of poems came out, and, and some of them are here. Uh, this first one draws upon experience I had traveling to Ghana in Africa, where I saw houses that you or I might live in next to these little huts. And it was startling contrast, and they would have barbed wire and alarms and this kind of thing. So you'll uh, recognize that in this poem. This one's called Boot Petite. Petite boot, not petite bourgeoisie, as in booties, small, soft things for small, soft feet. The petite boot is made to prepare the young for the world, for a lifetime of cover-up, hiding, protection. Soon there will be alarm bells, gated walls, barbed wire around the perimeter of our homes to keep out the shoeless ones. Another one along this vein called Boot Inhabited. You'll recognize a fairy tale or whatever it is in here. Sometimes the boot is big enough to house whole families, as in the old woman who once lived in a shoe and was evicted for failure to pay rent. So she moves into an abandoned boot. This is fantasy after all. People don't live in boots, shoes, unless there be giants, drunk, stumbling, shoeless, through the moonless night. And I'm going to sneak one more in, called Boot Strap. You might recognize reference to some of our recent presidents. It is thin leather looping to the top of the boot, something to hold on to after you've fallen and you're trying to get up. The only thing to hold on to, according to those who know human nature, cowboy philosophers carrying guns and Gideons. So when you're down in the dust, remember that the boot is not just for the foot, but is a hand, imminent like a prayer, thick like skin. Thank you. Dewey Square, dome tents and blue plastic tarps, smudged like a street woman's top coat, a ramrod straight, plain clothes cop, 
in a piss-colored windbreaker, standing like debt. Boxes of carrots, battered apples, scribbled on cardboard. Protesters in clusters, arguing, praying, airing their tents, already mildewing from last night's downpour, drums and timbales, a sukkah, a stage, duct tape, a t-shirted, apple-eyed string quartet playing Beethoven, a portable, larger-than-life-size statue of Gandhi, eyeglasses down his nose, and everything bronzed, tied by a cord to what might be a disused aluminum light post, Indian cotton bandana tied on his shoulders, gold thread entwined in the red-figured weave, right hand open and stretched like a taproot or a flambeau carrier balancing a torch of kerosene-soaked firecloth and wrapped tightly around the thumb of his left hand, a Johnson's Band-Aid, as if in all of us running to hold on to his hand, we had rubbed the skin raw and fixed it with whatever we had around. And then I'm going to read another Occupy a poem from the Occupy anthology by Monica Teresa Ortiz Mortajas. Baby, I don't know that you or I will see this empire fall. I don't know that it will fall at all. And that's a quote, quote from Bianca Hins Foley. I say to you, Mr. Simic, the heart of the world is dying, not dead, but dying. And if the heart dies, fingerprints will scar windows, spider webs will replace the empty spaces where people once lived. Only death shrouds will survive, and all those mortgages will be left alive, still breathing. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was wonderful. Um, and now I'm going to read one of mine. This is uh, recently just ready to send out for rejection. <laughs> Ferd Melanson's oldest girl hears clarinet Rhodes band play the blues. You're in New Orleans. Ferd Melanson was, my, was the bailiff in the court where I was public defender for over a decade. Um, and the Sacred Heart of Jesus is a, is a church right on Canal Street. Piano man spreads out his hands, his cords cold cock a breeze, and it goes through my fingers like I was skipping church and playing Sunday morning monkey in the middle with my brothers. But the drummer hits the cymbal sides, gentle, and I hear little bells and smell the incense swinging up the aisle for my baby cousin Rafi's first communion. Wafer would be drying on my tongue, but Rhodes' clarinet is sugar rag behind my teeth, wine-soaked and slow, and underneath it wild like I was, a truant, sneaking out the side door of the church my old man called the secret heart of Jesus. Hard tops in the driveway, panties on the clothesline, clarinet, a rusty pulley squealing through the liquory air. And me, I was running on the tree root, broken up concrete, tripping, skinning my knees bloody. The old man wiping down my knees with sweet mercurochrome and grumbling, you are the fallingest girl. It's then I hear them play a low down riff off taps and road slides in my ears like the snake in a third grade Bible study story, slithering like he's old and sick and took to bed. And then the drummer beats the snare drum hard and tinny and I hear my father like a coughing motor, like a barky dog. Road pitches him his Road pitches him his last big notes high and high and outside like a Cubs home run on the old man's radio. And all that's left to me is air. Dagwood and Blondie after Rilke. Who knew him really? Striding like he did, 
left shoe kicking the corner of the second panel, one arm flung behind him, one hand sandwiched forward, bread crumbling at the edges, roast beef, ham, and gorgonzola, zigzagging as if to frisbee off and smear the yellow skirt and blouse Blondie's wearing, buxom in the living room, watching, faintly wary, did she comprehend with all her deadpan common sense how the hunger took him like a jungle puma stalking helpless villagers in the Sunday color episodes of Terry and the Pirates, smells its prey and leaps? Or did she dismiss the visceral pounce as a cascade of bams and wax and crisscross stars ballooning overhead and see only flats and paint, a movie where the driver and her passenger are still and the scenic route, another film, moves obviously behind them? Could she have picked out how he piled his meats and pickles cold from the refrigerator the way a child constructs a wobbly Lego wall that he imagines just once will stay upright until his nap. And, oh, okay. And this one is, look, it's an imitation of Gertrude Stein. Let's see if it works. Button, not button, button. Book, oh, I should say. This is uh, about my one of my little girls who's 28 now, and uh, her leaving, I guess. Book, book is, scribbler is here, not here. If size is a wagon, it is three inches. If print curves, it is a crayon. If the red and yellow and green dry, if the flood dry out, if the car, the daughter might upon a time if. Name Flood, name Very Nice Grill, named Ida Zin too. Who? Grill named Molly, four hearts. Red is a mama, together is a nice art. She drew brown, she drew stick figures, she drew petals like hands, drew neck, long waist, Purple storm scribble, make the rainbow, can you stay? Gray is dark, silver is scribble, loops, and this is the nothing, black. Spelling. Letters picture sound, sometimes clouds, sometimes lose red, lose together, lose R's. Bing me home, mama. Spell me heart, spell me seven, spell me years. Spell me yellow, spell home, mama, spell me. Two is here, me. Ida's in who? Right. Two is right hand, circle right, right, stripe over white. Two is egg, white. The beautiful. Why circle stain? Why lines twist? Why wool tangle? Why does crayon print? Then print right, cursive blurring blue, water staining lines dissolving, straining. Why the blue heart? Why get big, get out? Leave behind the green wagon? Why heart there? Why book abandon? Why dried blue blots is time? Thank you. Thank you. The money flows up. The money flows up. We're working in a world that's bottom side top. When the costs flow down and the money flows up. I work two jobs, my wife does too. There's nothing left when the bills come due. We can work all day, never fill our cup. When the costs flow down and the money flows up, the money flows up. The money flows up. The money flows up. Work all day, never fill our cup. When the costs flow down and the money flows up. 
When you build your house on a master plan That's born on the backs of the common man But the benefits go to the few at the top Then all the costs flow down and the money flows up The money flows up The money flows up When the benefits go to the few at the top All the costs flow down and the money flows up I've got this to say to the penthouse few There's 99 of me for every one of you And we could dam that river where the deals are struck That make the cost flow down and the money flow up The money flow up The money flow up We could dam that river where the deals are struck That make the cost flow down and the money flow up and to the folks who work down on Capitol Street And hear just the voice of the corporate elite You know, it's quite simple, we could fix this up Spread the costs around, the money shows up The money shows up Yeah, the money shows up It's quite simple, we could fix this up Spread the costs around and the money shows up we can work all day, never fill our cup When the benefits go to the few at the top We could dam that river where the deals are struck With the costs flow down, the money flows up Chan.